All right, guys, we're $100,000 over budget, and we're going to go into all the details right now. So before we dive into why we're $100,000 over budget, we're going to go over all the costs we've already incurred so far. So far, we have a fully framed house with a shingled roof. For the interior, our plumbing, electrical, and HVAC roughs have just been approved. And then we're going to cover the cost predictions that we have moving forward. So let's talk about the costs we've already incurred. Starting out with our lot, we're looking for a piece of land in Metro Detroit, Michigan, and we wanted it to be pretty wooded and secluded, but still close enough to a downtown area. We were able to find some land for $63,000, but we also had to put $10,000 worth of land clearing into it. The next two things that we had to pay for was the excavation and foundation. The foundation being one of the biggest chunks of money that we're going to have to probably spend for this entire process. Next up, we have the underground plumbing and the concrete floors coming in at $24,000. Since we live in a rural area, we don't have city water, so we had to dig a well. Our well is 125 feet deep, bringing in our cost at $11,000. So the biggest chunk that we have is the framing materials, the framing labor, and the steel beams coming in at $162,000. Later in this video, we're gonna be doing a deep dive into that $162,000 to see how it really affected our overall budget. Next up is a roofing material and labor coming in at 19,000. Brick and labor coming in at 25,000. This was a conscious decision of ours that affected our overall budget. We'll talk about this later. Windows, and we got our windows from Weathershield and this is pretty much just the material cost because we put the windows in ourselves so it doesn't include the labor and it comes in at 31,000. Our HVAC and fireplace coming in at $8,000. Some other miscellaneous items included our permits and applications, our back patio concrete slabs, and some other odds and ends. So the current costs up to this point have come to $417,000, and we still have a lot to go. So here are the predictions of the costs that we still have to incur. Electrical, we predict this is gonna be about $19,000. This will include the materials and the labor. Right now we're in the first stage, which is the rough stage, and we have the wiring, the electrical boxes, and the cans in the ceiling for the lighting. Then we'll go into the final stage, and that's when you have your switches, all the light fixtures that you want. But we're not gonna be able to save any money here because we're not doing any of the labor ourselves but our guys are doing a great job. Plumbing, plumbing's gonna cost us 17,000. That includes all the materials and the labor. For materials, we have PVC piping, PEX piping, all the copper fittings, and all the fixtures that are gonna go into it. Right now, as you can see, we're in the rough stage, and that got inspected. We did get approved for that, and then the next stage will be the final. That's all your fixtures, um, your faucets, things like that and that total cost is 17,000. Stone, so in a previous episode, you may have seen Ferris and I picking out our stone, but it has finally arrived. It's all these boxes here. Here's one of the smaller pieces, and I know for a fact that this cost us $10,000, so that does not include labor because Ferris and I will be putting this up ourselves. And that's a lot of boxes of stone because wherever you see any of the Tyvek paper on the house, that's where the stone will be going. So wish us luck because that's a lot of work. So the next cost might not be a prediction because we actually just put our order in for insulation and it came in at $5,500. Mm -hmm. And this is not gonna include any labor because we're gonna be doing the insulation and that will be the next video. Stay tuned for that one. <laughs> and then after that, we're gonna have drywall. We just received our quote for the drywall coming in at 18,000. This includes all the materials and the labor for all the walls and the ceilings and the walkout portion in our basement. But what it does not include is the cathedral ceiling in our living room because we will be putting tongue and groove up there ourselves. It would cost us $1,800 to drywall our ceiling. And although the tongue and groove is double that amount, we think it's something we'll really enjoy and we think it'll be something great for resale. The septic, this comes in at $13,000 and this is a huge prediction for us because we haven't gotten any bids on it yet. But before we get the septic in, we're getting a huge load of 500 plus yards of free fill dirt. So that's no cost to us and they're bringing in the trucks as of tomorrow during this filming. So in the next video, we might have some fill dirt in front of the house. Painting. We estimate about three and a half thousand dollars. The guys came and painted the exterior of the house, kind of, sort of. It's half painted because they came in the winter time and they had to stop. They'll come back when it warms up a bit. But for the interior, Ferris and I will be doing that ourselves. So we're estimating about a thousand dollars for that for just materials. Cabinets and countertops. So right now I'm in our kitchen and you can see this area is pretty big. We're going to have counters and cabinets aligning 
both of these walls with a large island in the middle. And plus, we also need cabinets and countertops for all of the bathrooms. We're gonna set this budget, estimated budget at 33,000. The 33,000 should be a decent budget for this area. The kitchen is always a main focal point in any house, so we don't wanna skip out here. It's also a big resale item, so maybe we can do it under the 33,000, but we're gonna leave it at that for now. Can't go too cheap on the kitchen, Ferris, come on. Next up is the driveway. In case you guys haven't noticed, that driveway is gonna be very long, so we're estimating 15,000 for that one. Flooring, this is just an honest prediction. We think it's gonna be around $10,000, and that includes just materials. That's the engineered hardwood and the tiling that we're gonna have in our bathrooms. We're gonna be doing all of the work ourselves, so no labor in that. Wish us luck. <laughs> New appliances, these are pretty easy to predict because you can go online and just shop around, so we're estimating about 5,000 for those. And miscellaneous things, we're adding another 5,000 in there because you never know what comes up. I wish we had $100,000 There's always more costs. We need $100,000 miscellaneous. <laughs> The total of these cost predictions we still yet to have to incur comes to 157.5. So now that you've gotten all our predictive costs for the future, now we're gonna tell you why we're $100,000 over our original prediction. Here's what happened. Our house is a 2,800 square foot ranch that we estimated to cost about $150 per square foot. This brought us to $420,000. Once we had that baseline of 150 per square foot, we did a deep dive into the surrounding neighborhoods and the comparables. We wanted to make sure that our home fit into the neighboring areas, that it wasn't just something that we wanted, but something that would also be good for resale. So after checking the comparables, we did make a few changes to our prediction, and that bumped it up to 165 per square foot, putting us closer to 465,000 instead of that 420. But we thought it would be great for resale and also some things that we really liked ourselves. But that's not where it stops, unfortunately. So now we're gonna get into the reason why we didn't hit that 465 mark and we're really gonna be 100,000 over that. <laughs> These are the unforeseen costs and even some of the foreseen costs of the changes that we made throughout the process. So let's dive into it. Just prefacing before we get into the additional costs. We never increased the square footage of the house. We just added more details to the home, therefore increasing our per square footage costs. All right, let's get into them. So behind me, you can see the cathedral ceiling. This was a big chunk of money that was extra. Originally, it could have just been a nine foot ceiling like the rest of the house, but we decided that this was gonna be a showstopper, something that would add value to the home, but we didn't realize how much extra it would cost. So when you're sitting at home, you may have noticed that lumber prices in general have been going down. That's mostly like your two by fours, two by sixes, regular lumber, but engineered wood that is like trusses, LVLs, OSB, have actually been rising because manual labor and labor costs have also been rising. Yes, lumber has been going down, but anything that included more manufactured wood, mm -hmm. that's been rising. And in the case of the cathedral ceilings, that was almost all the manufactured wood. Yeah. So we thought maybe that would help us out by the lumber going down, but in turn, it it's been down. the opposite. <laughs> And something we also have to take into account is the trusses are specifically made for your house. So the labor cost and engineering that went into this was really high. That's something that we should have foreseen, but in this case, I guess we're just a little naive. Us being naive cost us $15,000 for this cathedral ceiling over a normal ceiling. But at the same time, I'd still do it again. So the angled garage was something we really wanted to have on the house because we wanted that long ranch look. But we have this third garage here that's taller for a potential van. And similar to the cathedral ceilings, we had to use these custom trusses and a lot of sheet wood on the roof. We could have went from a three car garage back down to a two car garage, but at the time we didn't realize how much more those engineered trusses were gonna be. It ended up costing us a lot more because of that engineered wood, similar to the cathedral ceiling. Yep. The covered back patio. The cathedral ceiling in the living room was kind of like a domino effect. We loved the look of it and we wanted to carry it through our front porch, through our living room, all the way to the back patio. 
In the end, this added $15,000 because we had to have the custom trusses, a lot more sheet wood on the roof. And we also had to bring in four concrete manufactured slabs to be the floor of the back patio. Lastly, there was a decent amount of engineering work that went into this, and there's a lot of steel beams and support that's holding this whole patio up. Brick. Brick wasn't a material that we originally set out to add to our home, but our HOA said that we had to have 90% masonry items, and we wanted to have the front of our house be unique, and we wanted to use different wood materials on the front of our house. Mm -hmm. That being said, to keep it to 90%, we ended up bricking the entire back of our home. And the sides. Originally, we wanted to have some board and batten mixed in with the brick, and that would have cut down costs but the brick in total came to 25,000. If we didn't go with brick, we still would have had to add something to the back of the home. So it wasn't 25,000 extra, but it was closer to about 10,000 extra over if we went with board and batten. Yep, house location. So our lot's in the shape of an hourglass with the wetlands on the side. So when we were first designing our house, engineering told us that we'd have to move our house up towards the front of their lot or push it all the way back towards the woods we decided to push it back for more privacy. But this meant we had to bring in special machinery to pour our foundation, and it also means that our driveway is going to be super long, so that means some extra costs in concrete. Now for one of our biggest unforeseen costs, our basement, this cost us $15,000 extra than what we thought it was gonna be. Originally, we wanted the height of the basement wall to be nine feet, now they're 10 feet. The reason why I had to go to 10 feet is we ended up excavating one foot lower than we intended to, to make sure that we were on solid ground. So in order to keep our front porch's elevation and our driveway's elevation the same height, going all the way through, we had to raise the house up one more foot. So that cost us $15,000 that we did not expect. From when we started to now, we've talked about some general inflation when talking about the wood, but there's been other things that have also inflated as we started our build. Mm -hmm. That includes other labor costs, concrete, copper, a lot of things that go into your house have inflated so much and that increased our budget by 25K. So in the end, yes, we're over 100K more than what we originally predicted, but we also believe that the value of our home is gonna be more mm -hmm. than what we originally predicted. Our total building costs are still gonna be a lot under what we think the resale value of this home is. <laughs> yes, we didn't want to have these increased costs and yes, it's gonna cost us more, but we do believe it's a really good investment and it's gonna be a benefit to us in the future. For us, it's a huge learning experience. So next time we'll have a better understanding of what our original budget will be compared to our end goal and end cost. <laughs> I think one of the tips I learned if you're building your own house is to understand that there will always be unforeseen costs in your build. So maybe have a little line item or a budget for those unforeseen items. Rarely, from the people that we've talked to, is it cheaper than what you originally thought it was. It's never cheaper. Now you know how we went 100K over our budget. This is just a midpoint of our build, so hopefully our predictions stay true. But we're gonna do another video at the end of our build and we'll see if this is actually true and we don't go another 100K over top no, of that. No, don't jinx us. <laughs> well, we'll see you in the next one. We'll be doing some insulation. See you then.